Okay, now, there is a really uh, bad problem with this shock. This is the uh, end result of what I want to show you for me, right? That's sweet. It's like brand new, right? This is the current, what's happening now. It's not even... You guys might say, oil, yeah, I did empty the oil, but it was doing it way worse with the oil, because the oil only dampened it, and that's because this shaft right here is pitted, right? I don't know if you guys can, what you can see, but I know you can probably see part of my leg too. This is the shaft, that little golden thing in there, that is very pitted, and pitted means, this is the other shock shaft. I don't know how close or how good you can see that, but hold on. I don't even know if it's focused on it. But basically, pitted is where there's like dense, well, not dense, but like it's really hard to explain. Imagine something that's really glossy, shiny, like how it should be, and then the same thing is all dented and beat up and scratched and all that garbage. That's basically what this is versus this. These I barely used compared to these plastic shocks. The reason why we upgraded, well this is garbage so you might as well got So, oh, actually I need to pick this up so people don't step on it because I can still use the piston off of there. So basically the reason why you would get plastic shocks like this is because these caps pop off very easily, especially if you're doing big jumps like what I was doing. These shocks, these caps, they do come off. They're only plastic uh, stuff. Now I think I wrecked it. Yeah, I can't open that. I need players now. So if your garbage is garbage and you can't really get it open, use a pair of pliers and squeeze it because we're not using this part. This part is ass. This garbage, right? Actually, I could even use this one too, but let me just compare the two. I don't. Oh, this is a. I think this is a front shock. Definitely a front shock. I'm not. By the way, there is a difference between front and rear shocks. The travel. I think. Yeah, the length. The length of this is the travel, because the shock in the back can compress more. Ah, oh, I shouldn't have did that. There was fluid in it. That was bad. I forgot there was fluid in it. I thought I emptied it. By the way, before you even mess with your shocks, like what I'm going to be doing, empty it. The metal one that's garbage right there, this one is already emptied. Now, the garbage ones you can just, you know, it doesn't really, that's what they do when you drive them. They go, so they don't go out as fast as they, uh, as they compress, they don't push back out because the shock, that's what they're for, so it doesn't slam back open. And if your uh, shocks and everything slam back open, that's not good. So you can see how this is smooth, like this, and this is garbage, right? Hey, now it's actually coming back out. But anyways, no, I'm actually going to get to the part where I'm going to start demolishing different garbage. No. Clean everything out, make it bone dry. Yes, you heard me say old people terms, bone dry. I think that's old people terms, I'm not too sure. Now, oh, by the way, I'm 14. I just figured this out. You uh, roll up the, not this, this isn't what I, ah, this isn't what I figured out. Uh, you roll up the cloth and you just stick it in the shock and turn the shock. So all the oil's off of there. Now, Throw that somewhere, you probably won't need that. But I do recommend you have some paper towel. Some more. Now, I looked up this uh, guy, I forgot what his name or his channel was. I think it was like uh, RC Forums or some shit. Something like that. But anyways, he showed me how to fill up the shocks. Well, he didn't show me, he made a video on it. But anyways, you take this, you grab it at the very end the very, very end, and you twist this off, 
because you do need to squeeze it which might pit it it might beat up the shaft and this part of the shaft shouldn't be going inside the shock now after that's off you see how there's this isn't thicker than this and this travels through the shock you just right out simple you pull it out I'm going to be really pissed if this isn't recording right now. I feel like it's not recording. Let me check. Okay, it's recording. Because if this isn't recording, then I would have to put everything back together to show people. So, now that this is all dry, you can even use this in there. Because if I... Where's that other one? So, this is basically the difference. Oh, wait. Oh, this one is shorter. <laughs> I think this might be a front shock. Let me see. It should still work. But I think it's front and rear shock. Let me see. Oh, this is a rear shock. <laughs> it was stuck right there. Yay, this is a rear shock. All right. So, repeat it. If you get that wrong, I can put this up as an extra shaft for the front if the front ones blow out. So, I'm just going to repeat the same thing. I'm stupid right now. Take the very end of your pliers and squeeze it right like that. And then just take it out. It's all threaded. Just look kind of like a hand-tightened screw almost, if you would think about it. So, take this out. There. Take the cap off if I can. Damn. See so, you now, you can squeeze it like this and put an Allen wrench through there. Or put a, a wrench that'll fit in there through there. And then you just right off. Just like that. Now, on this shock that I'm doing right now, the bladder is screwed up. Which I don't know if it'll leak or not. As long I think because of how it seals as long as a, uh, there's a ring around it like that that fits up in the cap and then it's like a big bubble that comes out that's what the bladder is inside the top of the cap that would go over this right here anyways uh, where's my paper towel I need to uh, dry this out as how I described it before bone dry so I don't make a mess it doesn't matter if you dry it out or not on the performance, but if you want to be less messy, you can do this. I mean, I don't know. And then you just push it out. Boom. Now, I'm going to do this so I don't drip oil on the carpet. Oh, yeah. Be careful when you're scraping rust off of stuff. We were supposed to paint the trailer and it didn't happen because I cut myself open on rust a little bit. But I wasn't even bleeding. And I thought I was going to get infected because of the inside skin. I don't know how to explain that. But anyways, uh, with this shock, I'm going to show you guys how to take all this off. It's really simple. You take this bottom piece and you hold this bottom the fitting. Pull that up. And then there should be a slot. Make sure the spring is actually off of that bottom piece. Mine kind of sticks to it a little bit because this is smaller. Then just pull it right off. Just like that. Then the spring slides right off. And then there's a piece on top that slides right off. And these spacers you can also slide off just like that. It doesn't matter how you take them off. If you snap them off or... Snap them off I mean like... Because you just... You can just go like this. And just... Rear it back off. That's what I meant. So this shock is ass. So, and that's because the shaft is pitted, and I gotta stop doing that because the more I do that, the more it destroys the seal. So if you guys have this problem where it's really stiff, look, and if your shaft is pitted on your uh, shock, replace it. Because most of you people are actually upgrading and you still have your plastic shocks. So we're going to do the same process we did before, except it doesn't matter where you grab it because this shock uh, shaft is already pitted and doesn't matter. So grab it anywhere where you feel like. But on the new one, grab it at the bottom because you got to put the damper on it.
it. So, take that off, slide the damper off or the bump stop, and then, oh god. Yeah, this is the problem. All those black spots are what they call pits. No. Simple. Slide this in, see if it fits. This is backwards, by the way. It fits perfectly, perfect. When I figured this out, I was like, yeah! So, then what you gotta do is if it fits that way, it has to fit this way. So you look down into the shock and look at the hole, and when you get the threads that poke through. Oh, let me see here, boom. Perfect, perfect fit, just about. You can put the cap back on, and that doesn't matter much. But you're going to have to take it back off to oil the shock, obviously. So to make less of a mess, I'm just going to put it back on right now and dry the shock off. Now, this is good, right? So, <coughs> grab the bottom of the shock, the bottom of the shock shaft, the players. I'm just gonna, I just call it the shock shaft. I have no clue... I can't even talk right this second. I can't... I don't know what it's called, so I just call it the shock shaft. Oh, no. Before we put the piece on, I forgot about this. Put on your bump stop. Now, after the bump stop is on, then you put on the piece on the bottom, the fitting, the screw. Alright. Now... It doesn't matter which one you put on, as long as it has that piece there. If it looks like this, throw it away. If it looks like this, use it. What I mean is it needs that center pivot point right there. Actually, it depends if it... You can choose whatever one you want, but I would recommend the one that pivots better, which is this one. Because the better it pivots, the less friction you're gonna... Ah! The less friction you're gonna have. I almost dropped the shock. That's why I made a weird noise. No, you just thread it right on there. Get it straight. Ah! This should be going on. Actually, I mean, you don't have to hold it with the pliers, actually, until it starts getting a torque. But you can't start it like this. I don't know what I'm thinking. So until that shaft starts slipping in your hand when you try to turn it on, then then you grab it. God damn, this really pisses me off. This thing keeps so I can't use the player. I can't use the player. The pliers. I hate this. The screwdriver on here. I'm gonna tape the damn thing in there. Alright. God damn you! Alright. Now, just turn it on the rest of the way. And if it doesn't go on until the threads, you can't see the threads though, when you are done screwing it on, you shouldn't be able to. And if you can't get up to that point, use this, stick it in there, like this, right? The Allen wrench, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, then you just turn it on. This is backwards. You squeeze it enough so it doesn't spin while you're trying to put it back on. And now you have a little bit more leeway if you're putting a damper on. I don't know if the damper comes with every single shock or whatever, but these shocks didn't have the damper. So now, bam. Now, if you put the top back on so oil doesn't go everywhere, take it back off. And this is also how you change the oil, obviously. You're just putting oil in. Now, if you're changing your oil, like maybe, let's say, you fixed it and then you put the oil back in so the seal stays pumped up and you want to change the oil a couple of days later that's why I'm showing you this you take the top off after you've taken the shock and the, or not the shock after you've taken the spring and everything off of there the spacers and you just do this into the garbage can you move the shock and tip the front end down into the can into the garbage can right now simple you take your uh, shock oil. I know it's kind of crooked on there because I had a hard time putting it on. Obviously, you tip it down into the shock so it doesn't squirt everywhere. And you only fill it up a little bit. And I'm going to tell you why right now. I'm not going to delay. 
That is because the thicker oil you use, the more time it takes for the air bubbles to actually get up to the surface of that uh, shock oil, meaning the more uh, the more time you have to waste, basically. So then you just move the shock up and down just a little bit, not above the oil, but within that little bit of oil, just like this, just a little bit. That's to get all the air bubbles out from underneath that piston, which you're going to need to do if you're doing this same procedure. Now, if your shock is still stiff after putting in the shaft, your seal on the bottom is garbage. So I'm going to put in a little bit more oil. Just a little bit. Now, one of these bottles, one of these small little tiny bottles that are like five bucks plus a two bucks shipping on Amazon. So that's seven dollars. That does all four shocks and only all four shocks. Oh damn. I need more shock oil. Jesus, I thought it was gonna go in more than I thought. So twist it so the piston, because there's two holes on each side, kind of like that. And well, I'll just show you. I think there is. No, one hole on each side even. And you have to twist it because the air bubbles are, all, they could be all the way around it. So twist it and just watch it. And when it starts to get really quiet and you don't hear like this kind of noise, then you're good. You don't feel anything. And it's just completely smooth, and the shock is. Perfect. We'll twist it and just go up and down little tiny movements. Okay. And then once that's done and all the air bubbles are out of there, fill the whole entire shock up until there's one millimeter. Now, don't actually fill it all the way up yet. Let me explain exactly how much. Now, this is a little bit more, but you're going to want to fill it up to this point. If you look on there, when you fill it up, there's going to be this kind of surface, but all the way around, you know? Kind of like an inside-out sphere kind of shape. I don't really know how to explain it. Kind of like, you know? So, if you look at the edges of it, around the edges of the shock, that should be one millimeter from the top, about, you know? you got to fill it up that much. I don't really know how to show this on camera. I can't turn flash on and off while I'm already recording. So. All right, my legs are falling asleep from sitting on a floor. It's a hard ass floor. It's falling asleep even more because I'm sitting crisscross. Now I won't be driving it in this video, but leading up from this video, I will be driving it now that my shocks are fixed. Now, this is only for right now. If when this COVID garbage goes away, you people watching this in the future, you uh, you should probably replace your shocks. I'm just doing this because I'm bored and there's COVID garbage and I know hobby shops are probably open, especially in Illinois where we usually go. Now, as you see, whoa. Big ass tractor bitch passed by that gives me my goddamn asthma attacks because it bitches keep spraying the field. Now, that little thing in the cap, that bladder, is ripped open. This shouldn't be like this. It should be a perfect bubble. You place it on there, just like that. But don't screw it on all the way. Let it leak because hold the paper towel around it like this and push the shock in halfway or until you start seeing oil come out a little bit of air bubbles and a little bit of oil screw it in and you're good to go make sure you don't get the paper towel inside the threads in the seal bam and this is probably going to leak through the top because of the bladder being screwed 
if the ring is kind of garbage around it where it seals but other than that this shock is like brand new so you can take the bladders out but we don't have any more so I will be driving the slash with a leaky shock which you don't do that garbage because you will wreck your shock eventually I'm only driving it one time for the camera now my body is screwed up too I got uh, not super glue hot glue all over it on purpose I had to glue the body because if I didn't glue the body then it, there wouldn't be a body and I'm not using the body off of either slashes because my dad's slash, the Jenkins edition behind the camera I'm not taking anything off of there any more garbage Ooh, this doesn't leak awesome it doesn't leak it's sweet I like it it was the bottom leaking the whole time yay alright now the shock see it comes back out that's what's sweet about that I like that but it doesn't come back out the, all the way because it's you know it's a broken bladder I apologize if I call it the bleeder because I do that the same I do that I accidentally called it the bleeder a couple of times at first because I'm used to break garbage now I want to see if this shock bottom comes out too it does so this is how you should have it should go in and then back out now my seal if it still leaks a tiny 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 little bit if your shocks were dry for a little while the seals might just need to pump back up especially if you've been taking it through the water so it will leak until the seals pump back up but I had my shocks dry for a little bit while it was taken apart over here I don't think I ever drove it dry that much I like that. I think it should come out this way too. Like it's got spring. Yep, like it's got a little spring in there. Perfect. Alright, now, putting this back together. I'll just take a ride over there because I know you probably got your whole anyway there. That's what you're all Okay, now. Yeah, Tyler and Carrie, they're fighting again. He's pissed. So I'm going to push this back in there. And like that. Except. You need to put the spring on first. <laughs> Damn it! Alright, put on the top for the, uh, what do you call it? The spring guide? I don't really know what to call that. So you put that on there, you slip the spring over it, you pull the spring up. Pull it up enough. You slide this on there with that little hole, and then you slide it on the bottom of the shock. And then you push the spring over the bottom of there. Ah! Damn it! Almost dropped it. That's a good functioning shock to me. Almost. Ah. Alright, yeah, he's pissed about something. Yeah, he's swearing a lot. He's mad. All right. Well, do the same with the other shock. This one shouldn't. Ah. Yeah, the bladder needs to be replaced. All right. Putting this back together now. Okay. There shouldn't you shouldn't be having a whole lot of spacers maybe one thick spacer at the most all right Daniel hey that's calling you okay now these are all put back together now to put it on your machine most of them are all similar now I don't know if you guys can really see this great, but I want to take all this stuff off so I don't drop it all over. Nope, still recording. Yep, they heard everything. I just said Tyler and Carrie are fighting. 
I just said Tyler and Carrie were fighting because I didn't know what was going on. Tyler and Carrie were fighting? Yeah, because you said, you know you got your old lady waiting over there for you, so. Oh. Well, there's a CO2 cartridge here. I want to, This is uh, steel, so I'm thinking about melting it down and making special parts for stuff. So this is what I have, and this is not everything, because I need another one of these screws for the bottom, which is garbage because it should be here, but it's not. So damn. I needed it somewhere here. Oh, yeah, by the way, Simon, on your car, the front shocks need to be replaced because this is what was bent. That was all, like, when I would twist it. Like this. It should be like this, though, but not pitted. So it should be something more like this. Which it wasn't pitted. So I just put them in there so to see if we can straighten up the shock. But we have yet to do that. Let me see. It's not here, not there, not there. Not there, not there, not there. I don't know where it is. Oh, it's right here. Yeah, you probably you people are probably like, God damn it, I'm listening to this goddamn dumbass. So, alright. No. This is actually something you should listen to though, I'm serious. No. I have two kinds of element wrenches. Actually this is one of them. Yep, this is for this size. No. These just fold up. This is standard. This is not metric. This is standard. I should, probably shouldn't be hitting it like that. Alright. Well it's a tool, it should be indestructible. Anyways, which side fits the screw now? This side fits the screw. So, the big side of this, this is against the plastic, this is not. This is where the top of the, the head of the screw goes. So you slide the screw in. Tip your machine to where somewhere where it's comfortable to put it on. Yes, I know, my opinion gear is full of rust. Ah, it'll brush right off. I'm putting mine on the minimum setting so it has a really low center of gravity and less likely to fall over. Push it up against her and hand tighten it just to start it. Oh, it's not even in. Yeah. Alright. Now. This is going to take a while. You guys can skip ahead. I don't care. You guys are the one watching it. I only have 93 watch minutes. I might get two views. <laughs> I think I said 93 watch minutes. Alright. Very simple. Very or really? I don't know. Alright. Then you take this screw, you put this screw on top, put it through here. I'm really, really, really over explaining this. Put it through here, line this up, make sure this is correct. And that starts threading in. Then you grab your uh, wrench, your hex wrench or your Allen wrench, and then you start screwing it in. Make sure your wires on your speed control are not in the way. Oh, yeah. And, uh, Simon, he's the one, he screwed this up. He didn't screw up the shocks, but he screwed up the slash before. I had to tell a story. So one time, I told him about the faulty uh, controller, because sometimes the, uh, I think it's not the controller, I think it's the speed control, because I had another controller do the same thing. So I'm assuming it's a speed control now. But anyways, that was... Uh, disconnecting randomly and he was like flying up the driveway with it and I'm like dude slow down operate at your own skill level man don't be pressured to drive like a garbage can so <laughs> he just kept he kept flying up and down the driveway I think and then he like flew up and he was going and it disconnected and it flew and he stuffed it underneath uh, one of his mom's car or one of his uh, stepdad's cars or something now that was funny but I was pissed at the time, because he caved in the body, I thought he snapped the body. 
But I think that's why these cracks in the front, yeah, this is all super glue. I tried to fix it. It didn't work. I think that's why this was like cracked a little bit here, not this bad. This was cracked over here, and I think this was all caved in up here. He stuffed that damn thing under there. It wouldn't even reverse out. I had to crawl underneath the car, I think. That was funny. I can look back at it and laugh now, because this is fine. Well, I thought it was done for. Well, anyways, I'm putting on this another shock. This another shock. Alright. You can go like this and put it on upside down. If you want to. Ah, not even started in the room yet. Ah, damn. This is really irritating for me sometimes. This makes me bipolar. Ah! One second it can piss me off and the next it can make me happy. Right now it's really starting to piss me off. Just uh, oh, I think I don't like because I never used the one, never used this setting here before. But I read up on somewhere where this changes the damping or the uh, uh, what do you call it? This uh, characteristics for the damping or some shit. It changes the center of gravity so it's lower because instead of you set it on the very high one it's going to be all the way out you set it on the lowest one it's going to be closer to here and it's going to ride level and it'll make your control a lot better because it's softer too the shocks are going to be softer so i'm taking uh bro uh john's advice not i know a lot of john's this one this dude overdone by my grandpa lawrence uh he is really smart. He, uh, what he did was he had, I think it was a Yeti, and he softened up the springs and he set it on this setting and it never tipped over. This thing was tipping over a lot at the time because I was like, yeah, let it ride high, put, make it stiff for jumps. This got down. His pulled wheelies, but it squat more because the uh, stuff was really, really, really soft. But it got a lot of traction. That's why you see race cars, their springs are as soft as they can make them and they ride as low as possible. So they're more stable. Off-road vehicles need the ground clearance to go over some obstacles. That's why they're high. So they ride really high. This won't go in for the life of me. Damn it. I'm not cutting this video either, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not cutting the video, shut up. Alright, it's in now. Now, the reason why I put it on upside down is because it's easy and you can easily flip it because it's a pivot point, you know? It's a really long screw. I think it's longer than the other one, but it'll still work. Fine threads too. Alright. Should be good. Now, if you put it on upside down, just look like at that. I'm gonna be pissed if this isn't recording. I'm gonna check on this again. 
Okay, I'm at 34 minutes. God damn it. Alright, for some reason my legs are not asleep now, but they were before. Okay, now. Where is my screw? There is my screw. Okay. Now, I have already deleted that video from here, that uh, one where I talk for 45 minutes straight. That's where I cover everything. And I think I said in that last video, I just discovered this just now. You can swap out the shafts. I thought about it for a second, I'm like, wait. And I checked it and I held the two shocks side by side and I was like, oh, god damn. So I had the parts that I needed this whole entire time and I never even knew that. I still might even have the parts I need. The bladder is probably buried somewhere in a shock. So I know I only blew like three of them. Three of them all the time. All the time I've had this. There you go. Beautiful. Alright. These are aftermarket by the way. These are metal. They're still trimmed down from these wheels. Oh yeah, and these are the wheels that are balder than my dad's head. Now, wrong side. Where's your other one? Oh, where's the other one? The other one's right here. Oh, damn. This one's full of water. This one's heavy. Oh, God. Damn. Hold on. Now I'm cutting the video because I need to show my brother this. <laughs> I'm showing Daniel this. He's going to be like, holy God damn. So I'll be right back. Okay, now, that tire was all full. This wheel was full of water, one of them. Well, this one, this one was all full of water. You can see it came all out of the breathers in there. <laughs> well, anyways, it's simple. To put the wheels on, like this, line it up, and I don't have my cover on, I know. And then you just turn it. This is why. You might have to hold the spur gear so it can't spin. Make sure it's on the actual uh, hex adapter, make sure it's lined up. And then what you do, is you find your damn screw, and you put it on there. When the screw's threaded on there, it's pretty much done. These wheels were all full of water. So this is a seven thin wall socket. I think this is the one, for a ratchet, you know? This is what I have used for as long as I've had this damn thing. This is the only thing I've used, except for one time when I went over by someone's house and I didn't have it and I had a thin wall set. In. That's the pretty much the only thing I've used. Okay, now I think the other side's spinning. Yep, the other side's spinning in the carpet. Just make sure it's not really that wobbly and make sure that it uh, spins. When you take, when you grab the other side, make sure that it spins. If it locks up and it only goes like this it's not uh, it's over tightened there should be a, at least on mine there should be a little bit of wobble and I swear to god if I didn't unpause this the recording okay it is recording I think I also have 3d microphones on my phone because it was uh, there's two microphone holes on the top and bottom of the phone for landscape but I think in portrait mode it's uh, mono simple all right where's your other knot there's your other knot now these are lock knots which means if you take them on and off too many times they will garbage out and fall off right away so I've done this too much and that is over tightened so this is what it looks like when it's over tightened what happens when you spin the other wheel. Now, there's still wobbly garbage in there because I didn't put enough, I think it's because there's uh, not enough washers. Now, over tightened? Yes. Now, this is what it should, this is what it should do when it's not over tightened. It should spin the opposite way of the wheel that you're spinning. And I put them on backwards, but that's fine because they're both bald. Now, it's pretty much done from this point on. There you go. 
insanely soft. Actually, I'd recommend a spacer at this point. <laughs> so, that's pretty much done. And if your uh, pinning gears are rusty, this is a toothbrush that I don't use anymore. I, this has been garbage, so just take a dry toothbrush and just brush it. Because it's not... Unless if it's been sitting for a while, then it... With water on it. Yeah, the rust is coming off of the teeth. No, it'd be easier if you take it off, but there's rust on the spur gear and everything. <laughs> they let sit for a while, and then I drove it again, and then set again. So, yeah, at this point I'm just going to put one tiny little spacer like this on each side. If I can find the other one. Oh, that's not even, so I'm not putting that on. I'm just going to leave it like this for now. So, that's how you fix your shock. That should be good. Oh, well. Yeah, you can kind of see that, uh, yeah. Anyways, oh yeah, there's the battery in the charger. That's the same charger that I've had since before I actually got the slashes, because before I got the slashes, damn, I'm shaking. Because before I got the slashes, where well, my dad did, we had low season, that's what that battery is there, because I tried to use the alligator clips because I cut the plug off of there for an adapter. Now, that charger stayed with us for a damn long time. If you guys ever want a good charger, they are kind of expensive, but they are a good charger. They charge up to six cell lipos, and they charge pretty much any battery. Oh yeah, this is more uh, hot glue. Uh, I use that so they can't that much, you know, when I land and they can't flex in, because our small dog ripped it from here to about here, that's, the whole fender is, now it's all, safe. it's, uh, you can see the crack, but the hot glue can handle it, yeah, it's kind of bad from the mud, but it'll be fine, but anyways, that charger can charge up to 8 amps, and it can charge a lot. It's called Dynamite Passport Ultra. You guys really, seriously, if you guys want to get into serious racing, and there's different classes, you have a bunch of, oh yeah, there's this thing too. This is one of the things that I had from a kid. It had uh, the turtle blanket up there. I'm just going to put that up there so there's no oil on it. Anyways, they can charge... Uh, nickel metal hydrate. I think they're called nickel cadmium. I think is how you pronounce it. And then they have the uh, what do they call them? There's a couple other ones that you can charge. Lithium, nickel metal hydrates, nickel cadmiums. I'm gonna call them. And two others. I forgot what they're called. PB and the other one. I don't know. And they can charge a battery up to eight amps. And this is not sponsored. I'm actually saying this because. Damn, they're badass. Seriously. It's got the LCD screen on it. They are kind of expensive, though. But it is well worth it if you have the money. So. If you guys want me to show you a video on how to use it, I can. But there are ones out there. I'm going to show you what I know. So. Yeah. Yeah. These golden shafts are a serious problem, and this camera is a serious problem because it won't focus. So I need to manually focus it. Manually focus! There. These shocks are a problem because... Yeah. See that right there, that silver? Manually focus, please. God damn you. I don't think I can go up that close. Now. See there? Another one. Yeah, these are all pitted and garbage. I think that's because where that silver is, that's where it's all pitted. Now, that was in the front. This is the back. Front, back, front, back. Now, these can rotate inside the shock, but I've never rotated it before. So. 
this is the plastic shock that got way more of a beating than the other one from it. It's kind of destroyed all the way around, but it's not bad because that won't leak. And that's actually the reason why it leaked. So, other than the bladder being garbage on the bottom. These are garbage. These are not. These are garbage. These are not. Focus. Manually focus. Ah. I'm filming with one hand. Shut up. God damn you. Alright, these are not garbage. Focus on the damn piston, please. Focus on the piston, please. Focus on the piston, please. Alright, I'm done with this. Alright, I'm done recording. This is it. Ah, it fell. Alright, I'm done recording now. So. God damn it. Alright. So the slash is pretty much done. The cotter pins all here, as you can see. And I will put the... I'm Right now I'm putting the body on it, and I'm going to put it away. Because that fan needs to go by that window so it can blow air in, because we have no air conditioner. So, I'm done right now. I will talk to you guys in the next video. I might be with Simon. I might not be with Simon in the next video or the next couple of videos. We might race the go-karts. We might not race the go-karts against the NASCAR. We also might be getting a couple of lawnmowers from Mike. We might or we might not reverse the pulley and rip on the governor and see what happens. That's all stuff for later, but for now, I will see you guys in the next video. Maya, no, had a great time.